Good evening, everyone. You are listening to the first show of Quantum Possibilities that will be shown and heard Saturday nights at 10 Eastern Standard Time. We have our wonderful hostess and her guest for the evening, and I'm going to let you just take it from there. Hi, Tracy. Thank you. My name is Cindy Fleming, and I am the hostess for the show, Quantum Possibilities, and I am looking very forward to the future and what holds for all the quantum possibilities for all of us. Every day we wake up to an ever-changing world. New ideas are beginning to integrate into our everyday life. One of the areas that really, really needs to be integrated and looked at is medicine. Medicine is a future subject and a concern for many, especially in the United States. There are two, basically, uh, everybody knows about conventional medicine, what we call Western medicine, conventional allopathic, and also, I don't think there hasn't been anybody that hasn't heard of alternative medicine, which is ever growing in popularity. And at times, it is also known as enhancement. Dr. Paul is going to be my guest and I am very, very honored. He is the president and founder of Quantum University tonight, and he will be able to explain a lot more what integrative medicine is. Dr. Paul Droden, he is an accredited medical doctor with very, very many accomplishments to his credit. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Paul Paul Droden. Um, Dr. Paul, you've been a medical doctor for, for 25 years to 30 years. When and what sparked your interest in natural uh, natural medicine? Yes, uh, first of all, thank you to have me on your program uh, today uh, or tonight, uh, Cindy. It's a very uh, pleasure and honor uh, to share with you uh, uh, what is the theme of your uh, program, you know, the all possibilities, infinite possibilities, and I am sure we, we will have the opportunity to speak about it tonight. Uh, of course, uh, if I look at this history of uh, 25 years of medical practice, it's a long journey. And uh, I don't think you, uh, one day you wake up and uh, you are interested in natural medicine. It's something that has uh, really uh, been my interest since the beginning. Uh, what sparkled me uh, years ago uh, when I was a teenager is my brother was, uh, had an osteosarcoma of the, the skull, which is very rare. And uh, in that time, of course, you know, the, the treatment for that was uh, none, so he died. And that was like uh, seeing him uh, for two years, going to all the, you know, the, the pain of uh, a, can- a terminal cancer and uh, powerless, you know, about, uh, you know, wh- how to help him. So this is at that time I choose to go in medicine. And that, and for me, uh, this is, I, I, I was, what was possible was more of kind of a conventional training, education. We were not speaking at this time about integrative medicine or holistic medicine. And uh, this is how I sparkled my, my interest for, uh, you know, trying to understand in depth, you know, how disease work and how uh, we can uh, manifest healing and how we can uh, restore, you know, from uh, a different uh, uh, perspective, you know, uh, health, and and of course, you know what's happened along my my journey. I became a medical doctor. I practiced at the beginning uh, what we call family medicine. I done almost everything, uh, and, uh, so, uh, minor surgery, uh, emergency care. I even work in uh, northern Canada with Inuit and Indians, and uh, and uh, Native American, and and but pretty soon, uh, you know, I was safe. Uh, after already a few years after my practice, I realized uh, the limit of uh, the conventional medicine. And this is where I start already to, uh, in a quest, try to find uh, other modalities of healing. And uh, I don't know if you want to interrupt me because it's kind of a long story, but this is how, uh, you know, I end, uh, you know, uh, being uh, studying homeopathy and become board certified in homeopathy and naturopath, homotoxicology, uh, acupuncture, uh, there was uh, nothing enough for me, you know, to to go uh, and be able to offer all the the, 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 the possibilities for uh, someone who is uh, caught in a drama of chronic disease, a cancer, or any type of disease that uh, truly medicine, conventional medicine doesn't really have answer for it. 
So uh, and uh, so that that was <laughs> 25 years ago, and and this that was an an incredible journey because it allowed me to uh, integrate as a medical doctors modality uh, that we call today. We will speak about this later on, but complementary alternative medicine like homeopathy, acupuncture, and nutrition in in my in my medical practice, and. Uh, but soon I recognized that there was a limit to it, you know, because uh, medicine is most of the time challenging the other model of healing, and and I believe we will have the, the opportunity to speak about it tonight. Oh, absolutely, and you're right about that, too. Um, that's basically what started me into looking more in the, the field of medicine, too. Um, I think it takes uh, family illness, the unanswered questions, the frustration, and even though I have doctors in my own family um, in Western medicine, a lot of times um, they're limited because of the knowledge um, in some areas or for other reasons, um, but it's so beyond frustrating, and if the doctors, and I know that this is a big part of it, and alternative medicine and quantum medicine, um, we're bringing the patient back in. Um, to that equation, which we'll talk about in, in just a few minutes. Can you tell us more about Quantum University and some of the um, goals for the university over the next 10 years? Um, I know that when I first came across it, I knew this was where I needed to be. I had been looking around and considering it for a while. Um, I had been um, a reverend in non-denominational um, clergy for since the early 1990s and have worked spiritually with many people uh, from all faiths, all walks of the life, from the occult and Christianity and just every, every path that's out there. And um, so I have a good understanding of people and I do listen to what they have to say and, and you know, one thing is, is integrative medicine is definitely um, very, very, very promising all of the possibilities that will come. But can tell us a little bit more about the university. Um, it's amazing and what some of the um, goals are for the university over the next maybe, say, 10 years or even more into the future. Uh, it's, <laughs> I have to tell you, it's pretty exciting. Uh, first of all, the full name of the university is International Quantum University for Integrative Medicine. So it's kind of a full mouth. We, we have uh, shortened with Quantum University. Uh, I, I can say now at this time we are the leader in what we call the quantum integrative medicine, and we will explain more what it is uh, uh, in the few minutes. And uh, and and this is uh, and this is something we're proud of it, you know, because we have now students in 40 countries, uh, over 8,000 students, and uh, so we already uh, I would say an awareness, a collective consciousness out there. And, and and what we teach and think about and speak is it's something that is already out there. You are not in a more an isolated uh, phenomenon. You know, year thirty years ago, you would have to speak about this, and you know that was kind of a rare. But today, you have uh, scientists and uh, searcher and uh, the the international community and in a, in a collectivity of people that are thinking in in that direction of. Uh, you know, to understand uh, uh, the world, the reality from another point of view, which is quantum physics. So it's not in, in, any more strange. So, uh, and this is what is quantum university. So, and where are we heading now? It's really to make a difference in healthcare. Uh, and and we have a huge problem at this point. You know, and, and when we're doing this program, you you're aware that there is a huge debate now in America concerning. Uh, you know, uh, healthcare, and should we be more social or private? But, but really, for us, you know, the, the real question is not about just about that. I come from Canada. I know what is a social medicine, and let me tell you that either way, nobody can afford medicine the way it practice now. So it's yeah. uh, conventional medicine. Medicine is some way of un unaffordable, and, and this is where we come in. You know, and our the right question to ask is more, could we heal or could we practice medicine in a different ways? And, uh, and the answer is yes. It's like, you know, we have uh, energy crisis. Just to take a, a simple, a more simple ex example. And everybody agree that, you know, we have to look at other resources. You know, petrol is not anymore the, 
the king in the table, you know, we have to look and and different uh, variety of source of energy. Everybody agree with that. Same thing in medicine. It's like you know the the, the conventional medicine. The way we look at at medicine now, uh, allow two main source of of healing, which is pharmaceutical and surgery, which is very good because we're not we're not thinking to uh, erase that on the map. No, we just think to add more modality of healing. We are just adding, thinking to add more. Uh, the possi- infinite possibility of healing, and this is what are these science of like homeopathy and uh, acupuncture and naturopathy? They are there now for thousand years. They are probably more ancient than than uh, modern medicine, uh, conventional medicine itself. Oh, so, yeah. and yeah. and this is where is our goal? Is really to have a strategy. Uh, to have out there doctors, nurses that will learn integrative medicine and practitioners that will learn the nat- what we call natural ma- natural medicine to implement new possibility of healing. And this is very exciting, absolutely exciting, because science now is behind that. This is the, the most, uh, probably the most important message, uh, message I have uh, tonight here. You know, the science is behind this type of medicine now. Absolutely, and with all the things now that can be proven with the technology and the things that cannot normally be seen with the, the naked eye, such as air. We know it's there. Uh, we need it to stay alive. Um, and we also know that the life is life, great and small. A human at conception is very, very small. And uh, there is a whole world, a whole universe that is on the subatomic, and, and it all... Uh, it, 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 it comes into being um, and grows and just different levels of being. Um, consciousness, the human consciousness is multi-dimensional, multi-level, the quantum um, integration uh, of the human mind and the possibilities are just endless. Um, but I also know, too, there are a lot of wrong meanings. The wrong circuits are created by wrong conditionings. Um, a lot of things that need to be really looked at um, and revisited um, are also part of the problem um, as well. What are some of the obstacles that uh, quantum medicine or integrative practitioners uh, face today in the medical field overall? Uh, can you repeat that? You're, you're asking uh, what are the, the problems that integrative... Yeah, what are some of the, the hurdles that are mis- maybe um, misunderstandings or mis- uh, uh, maybe that what Western doctors, um, uh, misconceptions of uh, alternative practitioners? Um, first of all, let me go back to what uh, a lot of people um, are, are in Western, especially Western doctors, um, they look at alternative healers as sometimes... Um, you see a lot of people that are going to weekend seminars and getting certifications to be practitioners, and, and they're calling themselves doctor. Um, and I know firsthand that the Quantum University takes a lot of hard work, and it's not just a weekend seminar. Um, you know, anatomy, you know, hematology, it's just every single thing that a regular medical doctor, you know the body inside and out. And then you have the extra, the vital energy body, um, which is that up and above what is taught in uh, medicine, uh, Western medicine. So I think that, that right there, um, it, it would be a really key focus. Um, so is, would you say that is one of the biggest hurdles possibly between the Eastern and the Western philosophies? In yeah, and this is this is as simple than that. Okay. I practiced medicine for 25 years. When I start to implement any alternative or modality of uh, alternative medicine in my practice, the main argument against is to say this is not scientific, this is not teaching university. Everybody has to understand that. You know, when you, uh, quantum physics and what we will speak about tonight is, is a paradigm shift. And it's already out there now for 50 years. But before it starts to be a really teaching university, and, and, and uh, before it, it's really start to be implemented in, uh, in uh, all the layer of our society, it takes time. This is very important. 
So Excellent. here is the equation. There is no way that modern medicine will welcome. And, and, and listen, this is very important. And sometimes people don't, don't get that. There is no right. way modern medicine will welcome any of these modality of, of uh, call them integrative, alternative, or complementary medicine if they don't have a scientific ground. This is as simple as it is. You have to understand, you know, all these, uh, 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 let's take some example here. You know, if we speak about uh, acupuncture, they refer to the chi. The chi is still for, you know, a conventional doctor, something esoteric. It's not, there is for them, it's, it's not a concept that they can really understand. If we speak about in terms of Ayurvedic medicine, now we speak about prana, and we speak about homeopathy and naturopathy, we speak about vital force. These core concepts has to be in some way explained, has to be rationalized to a, a scientific approach. And this is what is quantum physics. And this is why now they are more, they, they can be uh, welcome in modern medicine. And this is, and this is what is our challenge as a university. A university is where, you, you know, paradigm shifts happen. This is the pinnacle of a society where you know, not only new idea uh, start to be teach, but this is where also, you know, concept and new new model of science start to be applied. This is how important it is, and this is the mission of this quantum university, is to have a curriculum that that embrace that grasps the the, the science of quantum physics and medicine. Because you have to realize now, that I am a medical doctor. I was trained in, in, in medical university. The science, the model of science of healing there is still outdated. It's based on the old-fashioned model of chemistry and, and, and the microbiology and, and, and uh, molecular and, 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 and human anatomy and physiology, which is, which is great. It allows the doctor to understand in some way the mechanic, you know, the materialistic aspect of the human being. But there is nothing there that allows to understand the connection mind and body, to, to understand how works subtle energy and how works, you know, uh, psychosomatic disease and degenerative disease and cancer. There is a part missing in the curriculum that cannot understand that. I give you an example, simple example. Sometimes people they say, oh, quantum physics is over my head. It's very simple. You know, mm -hmm. if you, will you go fix your car to a guy, a mechanic, that didn't do his electronic course, you know, he doesn't have an understanding of uh, electronic. No, everybody mm -hmm. understands this, not just mechanic. The guy has to understand the circuit and how work energy. This is how look at the faculty of medicine today. They don't have the knowledge to understand the energetic part of the body. And this is what is teaching our university. This is where we have welcome a scientist, not, uh, it's not in a more uh, mystery here. This guy has published, he has speak about the, you know, how can we can apply this principle in medicine. They speak today about what we call neuroplasticity, how to change the brain circuit, you know, in behavior and so on. So we have that knowledge now. And, and this is what is about quantum university, is to, is to have a curriculum that reflect uh, an update of where is science today. And, and, the, and the university is, is a degree-granting university, so we can have people that uh, go from bachelor to PhD, and if they are doctor already, they can have a specialty in integrative medicine, or they become doctor in natural medicine. But what is important with that, with this new understanding of, of, the, of, of science, Yes, absolutely. Forgive um, me for uh, a moment, guys. Would you accept questions from the room? Oh, yeah, I can accept questions from the room. Okay, and I by the way, uh, bienvenue there, francophone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're from yeah, Canada. You're, you're in yes, Canada, I too, am. yes. yes um, but, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, if, if the doctor is willing, definitely, by all means. Okay, um, our first question is from Greg. And does observation change the result in the quantum medicine, as in the case with quantum physics that we have seen over and over again? Does it matter who is the practitioner? 
does it matter? He didn't ask this. So I'm asking this. Does it matter who is the practitioner, or does that change the result? Yeah, you see, this is a very interesting question here. When I was trained as a doctor, the approach, and I, I think it's still the, the approach, is try, try, try to separate the doctor from the client or the patient. It's like here, the, you know, we have an, we try to have a, a false objective relation, saying, you know, uh, both are separate, let's, let's try to be scientific and, and just relate to the lab. This is the whole, the old way to look at the relation patient, doctor or uh, practitioner, Healy or, and so on. Now with quantum physics, and this is what is the base of that question, you know, we found that there is, you cannot dissociate the observer from the experiment, the object from the observer. They are both entangled. They are like connected together. So this old fashioned way to look at the, the medical, at the relation healer, healy, or doctor, patient, is, is completely uh, past now. Because we realize that, you know, how you look at the client, you know, what you have in mind, what is your intent, you know, will, 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 will have an effect also on, on, on the outcome of the, of the, of the client. And this is what with, and previously we call the placebo effect. We still don't understand how placebo effect, but in quantum physics, we can understand that. So, uh, is there a difference between the, the now the practitioner and and the, and the Healy? Of course, it's kind of a trilogy, you know, where you have the the field. And this is what they speak in quantum physics: our consciousness, which is entangled with the healer and the Healy. And of course, sometimes they both get lost in it, but you know. Uh, obviously, the practitioner has, uh, should have some training to understand what's going on and give a direction to the whole process of healing. He, he is not the, he is not anymore the one who fixed things. He is just part of a creative process, and we can speak uh, a little bit more about it, but this, this is a very interesting question. But you understand how this is important now, you know, to redefine the, the relation between the doctor and the patient, the, the healer, the, the practitioner and the client of the healer and the healy. This is very important. And we understand, you know, how thing works there. It, it's a huge part, you know, of, of making healing happen. And, and uh, you know, stop me, please, because I can speak so long, a long time about it. And this is, you see, this notion is also important because sometimes, you know, during the last 20, 30 years, of course, people start to interest in natural medicine and natural products. But, you know, you can, you can still practice natural medicine, with, but the, with a, a mind of a doctor. You know, you replace pharmaceutic by uh, vitamins and products, but you still don't get this, this new dimension of healing that offer quantum physics. So this is very important to understand this new frame of quantum yeah. medicine. Absolutely. And also, um, there are a lot of tests um, that um, show that the, this particular uh, tangled hierarchy of the doctor-patient relationship um, have much, much better results than an individual person meditating. Even though they may meditate and they may do it well, um, the results are, are sometimes so much more um, in a positive manner when there there is... Too, in the in this healing relationship, the patient doctor relationship, or the client doctor, um, that is very specific. Um, um, I think that is also important to mention here too. Um, but yes, it does take a very very special person because you're going to have to take the time and really understand. You're getting in very intimate on levels with with each other um, because there are so many things that can cause disease, and getting to the root of it. I mean, so far I've learned a lot. I am so so happy with this university. It, it, that quantum university is the place that that specializes in one thing and one thing, and they're going to do it very, very well. When when the, the student is done, if you go through that complete uh, program that they offer, I guarantee you, you're going to have one heck of a doctor. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, no, that was that was very specific. Um, the tangled hierarchy. As a matter of fact, there's a tangled hierarchy there because I was going to ask about that. My next question was to do with the doctor-patient relationship, um, and that uh, right there. So that was very, very 
interesting how that worked out. Um, but uh, many people ask, um, what does quantum physics have to do with medicine um, versus just one or the other? I mean, um, yeah, mm-hmm. you see, it, it's also a very interesting question because people, as, as soon you you come out with this word quantum physics, it's like, oh, it's too complicated for me. Uh, quantum physics just makes sense of what we already know and doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because people know these things. You know, they know, by example, if if you uh, if you pray for someone, or if you have a, a positive uh, thought for someone, that will affect the process of healing. Everybody knows this kind of notion, but science, you know, doesn't doesn't know how to explain that. So when we come with quantum physics, there is a principle called non-locality, where we can prove this kind of effect. But if you still with the whole the the whole uh, model of uh, physics and, and and the model of medicine, conventional medicine, it doesn't make any sense. So you, you, people will think about this question of intention, of prayer, and and, and because there is no concept to, to try to clarify that, then it doesn't make any sense. So this is what is quantum physics. Quantum physics is, is this is this new model of science that starts to understand the, the what I would say the fabric of reality uh, or phenomena that most of the time doesn't make sense to our mind. But you know, intuition by intuition, we know that this is what what works, and this is what is quantum physics. It can it can understand you know this is what we call the vital energy, you know, and this is important because if you want to make sense of as I said previously of acupuncture and all these ancient model of healing, you have to like a naturopathy or homeopathy. You have you need this. This what I call subtle anatomy. You look, you need to look at the individual, and 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 what is there is not just physical. It's also energetic. It's also vital energy. It's also a mental body. It's also uh, so. In other words, there is many, many layers of information, and this is what we call today uh, that I call today subtle anatomy. So it's like you know, uh, quantum physics now. Uh, will add to the curriculum of the medical school and uh, something more than anatomy, human anatomy and physiology. They will also offer what I, 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 I call uh, understand the subtle anatomy of the individual, and this is very important, and, and, and so on. So it, 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 this, and, and more than that, it re- quantum physics is redefining the concept of health. You see, when you walk in the office of a medical doctor, you know, and mm-hmm. I know I am one, you know, what, what is my agenda? I don't think, think people don't realize that. My, my agenda is to find what's wrong with you, you know? <laughs> Do you have a disease? You know? Can I find some uh, lab report that will show me what's g- going wrong here? So I'm not yeah. saying it's bad. You have, you, we need that kind of information. But quantum physics will redefine the individual, not in terms of disease, and I think you will like that, but more in terms of uh, infinite possibility, uh, infinite potentiality. So, in other words, not only what is wrong with that individual, but what are the parameters that if I work on, I can bring that in- individual at its full potential. So, it right. become a medicine of potentiality, more than just a medicine of you know, try to um, put someone in a box, and most of the time you have to realize that when you are in that box, cancer or degenerative disease, or, it's very difficult to get out of there. But if, when you are look from the other angle, then they look at you in terms more of bioterrain, bioterrain, physical, emotional, spiritual. What is that can I can change with nutrition? What can I change with your way of thinking or... Uh, you know, or you, of your uh, conflict and so on, that will br- restore your your harmony and balance, a- and bring mm-hmm. you at your full potential. Sometimes you don't even have to pay attention to the disease because if you work on these parameters, you know the inv- the individual start to just heal by himself. So you see, yeah. this is another way to look at things, and this is what I said at the beginning. This is where healthcare has to go. Because you cannot afford anymore this way to look at what's wrong. You know, <laughs> you have to look the other way around. You know, the half you you know this story: half uh, glass, uh, half uh, 
and they are half full. You know, we have to go for with other strategy, another another way to look at health, and and this is what is proposed it is proposed here. We have two right. more questions. If you would be absolutely after after these two questions, why don't we just do a little break, and you guys can have your breath, and we'll come back. But the first of the two is from Roger. He's saying, what is the projection or projected time frame in which quantum medicine applications will be in common use in a local neighborhood like doctor clinics? I I think uh, for me it's happening now. Because we already have a uh, practitioner, a doctor, either, now, I would say there is like kind of two paths with that we see uh, going on. You know, you have the, the individual that come and what they want is a career in natural medicine. So they come to our school, they would have what we call a doctorate in natural medicine and PhD, so that can title them doctor. And then all depend the state of the province or the area, because we're dealing now with 40 countries. You know, they, they have uh, what we call, uh, they are board certified and they will have the liability insurance and the privilege to work as a doctor in natural medicine and PhD. And these people already uh, work in wellness center. So it's already happening. Where, what we need is a bigger number. The other, the other side is doctor, nurse, and they don't think that these people are not open. They are as open that you have the same ratio, percentage of people interested in natural medicine or integrative medicine in, 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 in the field of, uh, uh, you know, hospital and clinic that you have in the population. Same ratio, same percentage. And, 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 and the problem they have now, many hospitals now already start to, to have a ban, the, the banner of integrative medicine. They don't know how to do it. <laughs> they don't. They don't know the how. They don't have the knowledge. So, and we already have a lot of nurses and these doctors that sign up in our in our university now. And I can see in the future, and we're working on that now. Uh, medical assistant program. It will be the one like with the nurse that will implement modalities in in the healthcare team. Because most of the time, you have to understand the doctor is most of the time overwhelmed uh, with the emergency medicine. The, the, you need someone to do this too, you know. You cannot, integrative medicine doesn't mean you, you, <laughs> you withdraw what we know. We, we are, our hospital and clinic now are, have absolutely advanced in, in technology and care and so we just need to add more, you know, more, uh, 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 more understanding of what we are doing. So, and, and this is already happening, this kind of, kind of thing. The question is the number. You know, we already see, you know, doctor and a nurse on one side, and now we start to do the medical assistant, and later, and then the other side, the, the wellness center. So it, I don't see, it's kind of, it's not a future for me. For me, it's a now. Uh, I believe in the next five years, or ten years, that will be uh, something that will be familiar to it. You know, I don't think that will be any more strange. You know, people will walk in a clinic, and, and then... Uh, uh, you, they will have, uh, you know, possibility to uh, add to their care, you know, other modalities. That that would not be strange at all, you know. We we are there now, because yeah. the, the, the 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 model of education is there, and this is what we have worked on it now for many years, and and, and the will is there, and the need is this is the, the other question is the need because we it's like energy crisis. I told you. We cannot afford anymore the other the other thing. You know, there is, that's the, the the problem. You know, this is, do you think now we we start to in, uh, interest in in wind and solar and all the other type of uh, a or energy because uh, the petrol uh, industry let it go? No, it's because we cannot afford it anymore. You know, same thing with the uh, the other side. You know, it's, it's, so it's happening now. I believe in five, ten years, uh, it would be, uh, this would be something that we would be familiar to it. Thank Absolutely. you very much, Doctor. We could, we can have our brief break right now.
Yeah, I, I, I'm too long to my, in my answer. No, no, right? no, you were perfect. <laughs> no, no, perfect. no, you're perfect. It's, I'm, you're very informative. That's wonderful. And then I can okay. ask the next question when we come back, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. we're going to take a little break, and we will be back in two minutes. Great. Thank okay. You. Welcome back, everyone. The doctor has just said that he will accept call-ins if you would like to call. Our number is 231-861-1926. Our Skype ID is flagshipradio.com. We do have one more question, doctor, and the question is from Greg. He's asking, and, you know, it was what you were just saying, too. What do you want to know? And I'm going to uh, scroll back and just read that. Can beliefs or lack of beliefs change the result of the... or hinder... The outcome. Uh, you know, the belief is is, is something uh, I would say uh, uh, interesting to look at. And of course, you know, it. This is what we were speaking previously about the intention, and uh, you know, I believe. Of course, it it affects the, the the process of healing. If you go to see. Uh, I don't because there is many angles to that, that quest, to take this question. You know, if we translate this in terms of trust, you know, if you go to see a, a doctor or a practitioner, and then and then you you are in, in distrust and you don't believe what they are doing, so that's very it's kind of a very start, very bad start for a, a healing a relationship, uh, especially when we understand this kind of entanglement. But but uh, if we think in term we think believe in term of the, are they uh, these uh, modality of healing if we believe in it or don't believe in it will work they 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 will yes they will work you know sometimes we are amazed to see uh, people don't believe in it and they have some great results with uh, uh, modality of healing you know you understand this is very important to see that because the belief has to do in some way with the placebo effect. But, but uh, per se, uh, any type of a uh, modality like homeopathy, naturopathy, acupuncture, or Ayurvedic medicine, believe or don't believe in it, they will work because they have a, there is a science behind it. There is a, there is a, a wisdom. There is a, and then when we, ta- we, we go in, in more in what we call the quantum medicine and quantum creativity, and I'm thinking about, uh, because we have uh, in, uh, in uh, fall, uh, September, October, uh, Congress of Quantum Medicine in Hawaii, and one of our keynote speaker is Dr. Pearl. I don't know if you you saw him doing uh, what he called reconnective healing. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it it works. You believe or you don't believe in it. So, in other words, you know, uh, I'm not saying belief doesn't add because it's, it's kind of a trust, but per se, you know, it's not because you don't understand the. the the quantum mechanic of these modality of healing that they don't work. You know, understand what I'm saying? This is very important because sometimes people think, oh, you, homeopathy work if you believe in it. No, it will work, but whatever, you know, and same thing with acupuncture, same thing with reconnective healing and other modality. And it's so surprising, you know, uh, especially when you, you are in quantum medicine. Uh, you're not necessarily uh, like the doctor in, in, in control of what's happening. And what's happening is is in some way uh, bigger than the doctor and the, and the client. So and it's even bigger than the fate in some ways. You know? So it's oh, not. Yeah. I don't want people look at quantum medicine like a, it's kind of a religion. You know, it works if you believe in it. No, you know. But of course, trust. It's like if you go to conventional medicine and and you are in distrust. I don't think that's good good idea because. Uh, you know, where, what, what, whatever, what would be the type of doctor you chose? You have to be in some way in trust with that individual. It's very important, you know. And, and for me, 
you know, when I speak about the integrative medicine, I'm not, you know, it's really a way to integrate all modality together. And, and, and conventional medicine is part of it. You know, I'm a medical doctor and I'm still in love with medicine like the first day. It's just I have, a, I have add to what I learned in medicine more possibilities to heal the individuals. When the client walk in, I have a, bi- a bigger perspective or, you know, a range of possibility for that individual to heal. This is just the difference. But I'm not de- denying, you know, all the, 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 the positive, all the, the, the resource that can provide me uh, uh, conventional medicine. I'm not denying that. You know, it's very important. Okay, I am talking about that question. Um, same thing um, with wireless. Um, 20 years, 20, 30 years ago, uh, you, we would watch an episode of Star Trek, and they had the communicators, and, and some of the things that they were doing on that show, it, no one thought of them being reality. But now, we are having the show by way of wireless. Um, so, I mean, it's wireless. Uh, we have thoughts, we have nerves, we have um, a lot of things that are wireless in our body. Um, and they work. They work automatic, um, but there are other things, too. Uh, I always like to talk about some of the things in the natural world, too, cause and effects with energy and sources, and not all our heat sources. You have uh, lithium that in the lithium batteries, and it converts energy. And the same thing with platinum in a catalytic converter. Um, there are many forms of energy, and one can cause another type of energy, um, and that's there, there are many, many ways and many tools in alternative healing, natural medicine, that if one, if one particular uh, treatment doesn't work, there are many. Um, and you work through it with your, your client, the doctors. Um, I, I am, I've seen uh, the professors and the excitement and enthusiasm um, when they talk about some of the cases and that and the results, it's just amazing. Um, there's just so many options now in this uh, field of medicine for patients. Um, you hear about the Mayo Clinics and the Cancer Treatment uh, Centers of America and how people are surviving what used to be the death sentence, the big C. Um, at stage four cancers, they're surviving and living a full life. Um, because there are more options for these people and, and they understand their disease and they understand their bodies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, what you, what you uh, speak about now is very, uh, very interesting. And, and we are just at the beginning now to see appearing a lot of new equipment and new ways to, to look at the individual. And But already, you know, we can see, uh, you know, uh, the way, by example, we look at the blood, you know. Uh, for years, I was interested in what we call dax- daxal microscopy, live blood analysis. Uh, there is other angle to look at the blood that are absolutely fascinating, you know, from the point of view of, of quantum medicine. Uh, mm-hmm. In Europe, now Germany, uh, uh, Switzerland, they work with uh, Kirlian photography, like a doctor works with radiology in uh, in uh, in uh, in hospital, you know, to be able to picture the, you know, the the the, uh, uh, the etheric body or the first emission of energetic body. So they take the print of the fingers and toes. It's like uh, having the 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 reading of the meridians. It's very interesting. So and then you can also know more how it works the chakras. Uh, there is a lot of things out there now that you can, of course, you know. Uh, co- uh, Add all together, and here you have a, a picture of the individual that is is fascinating. This is what I was speaking at the beginning. You know, you start to look at you know what can be done to to uh, restore balance, uh, and not now you're not against necessarily against disease. You know, you you're more working at the energy level, and, and it, just think about prevention. You know, prevention, and of course we are doing a lot of effort now. And, and the way I see it is more, it's kind of some way more screening type of prevention. And, but still, you know, it's, it's pretty gross because most of the time, uh, 
you you detect the disease when it's some way uh, it's, it's precursor, but you know sometimes it's even uh, too advanced. Or uh, or you have this kind of prevention. Now you see this now on uh, national TV. You know if you don't take this don't take this pill, then this will happen to you. It's kind of a pharmaceutical pre- type of prevention. You know <laughs> that's mm-hmm. where is quantum medicine going? It's really trying to detect. In balance, like the old ancient acupuncturists, you know, who will take the pulse and already in the energy field, you know, associated with different, uh, your know, way of thinking or nutrition, you already create this imbalance. So already at the, at the very subtle level, you can take care of things, you know, this is, this is prevention. And, uh, so now this is what is coming is absolutely, it's, it's out of our, our mind, you know, it's, it's Star Trek. Uh, time, uh, time ten. <laughs> oh, that would be incredible. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, the quantum physics, and um, I was when I ever since I was as far back as I could remember, I was the type of child that would take things apart to see how they worked. Um, so the sciences have always been fascinating, in quantum physics and uh, and the the whole possibilities um, of all of it when I was younger. Um, and now with um, superluminal communications and qubits and how, um, without going through space, they can affect something maybe in another galaxy um, that far apart um, at the same simultaneous uh, time, in real time. Um, you know, the, the possibilities are endless, endless. Um, and you superposition and we're using those qubits. Um, there's some things there I'm thinking. Um, the ancient peoples knew quite a bit of things, and it's also fascinating to look at um, even the origins of uh, ancient Samaria, where the, they did uh, sciatica on the year, the, uh, the cauterization, and some of those points. And that was thousands of years ago. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's the possibilities are endless. Um, and I'm looking so forward to the future um, in medicine. So, but uh, let, let's look at what is now. Uh, we uh, again, I like to speak about this congress coming in uh, October. Actually, it's uh, September 30th, uh, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in Hawaii, Honolulu. And I can, I can hear everybody now saying I cannot go there; it's too expensive. But it, it would be available online. So, if you go uh, quantumuniversity.com, you will have all the information about the congress. But one of our keynote speaker, Dr. Dispenza, you know, he was very known by the movie What the Bleed Do We Know? Uh, and he has, uh, he's the, uh, P, uh, he's the chiropractor, PhD, uh, who published, uh, the, um, uh, Evolve Your Brain and, uh, the, the Breaking the Habit to Be Yourself. And and the, and the, the subject here is what we call it's it's about neuroscience. Well, the, there's a concept what we call neuroplasticity, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's 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 absolutely. Uh, I will say, uh, it, when it, we speak about the future, there is like an edge, you know, when you that you cross, you know, when you go from conventional medicine in this new world of healing, and this is what we call today neuroscience. Because, no, be honest about it, you know, most of the disease are created by habits and way we think and we, uh, the way we, uh, we create conflict and, and, and the way we, we create our reality. And, and one of the challenges that has medicine, and I know I practice medicine for so many years, you know, people have to change habits. They have to change behavior. And this is the most difficult part of it. Most of the time, people will just give up and decide to, uh, you know, next time, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the dying to to, uh, to to change their way of thinking. And sometimes there's some emotion, you know, to let go are very strong, like, uh, you know, forgiveness and so on. Uh, I have this uh, sentence, you know, who said, everybody won't go heaven, but nobody won't die. So it's like, so, but... Uh, and and this is what is the cur- the core of this neuroscience. You know how you can change uh, uh, behavior and create new brain circuit. You know this uh, this is absolutely one of the most important chapter in medicine because you know when you 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 you, you can you have this uh, science, then this this is the key 
to heal this chronic disease, to heal this uh, autoimmune disease or cancer, because uh, most of these disease has a, a mind-body connection. And that will be uh, one of our subjects at the next Congress, you know, neuroplasticity. And now we have, uh, you know, they, they have science to back up that. This is very fascinating. They use what we call the brain mapping. So in other words, we have a way now to look at your brain waves, you know, how work your brain. And, 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 and if you do some type of meditation or some type of exercise, how you can shift your... Your, your brain chemistry and create new brain circuit. So this is where we are now. So and, and that would be uh, part of our next Congress. You know, we will have this, uh, the most recent studies of science, of neuroscience, and, and brain plasticity. And we will have also the opportunity to ex participants would will be able to experience that. You know, and, and we have room where the some specific meditation will be done where they can experience this as well as reconnective healing. So it's, it, it, we are just excited about it because it's not anymore now. It, yes, it's about knowledge, it's about science, but we also experience these uh, principles of, uh, of healing. So it's very, uh, this is what is our door now. And of course the future, as you said, you know, we can think in terms of the Star Trek, but now we're just crossing the first opening the door <laughs> on this new world of healing. Oh, absolutely. And it's amazing. Conscious beings, um, individual units upon myself, but added to the whole. Um, that's amazing. Um, the, the ability and what our minds can do and the power that we really, really do have over our own bodies. Um, it's amazing. You hear in the Western world the miracles that happen. Um, and then you have on the other side of the world in Chinese medicine that this is normal. This is they do this kind of stuff all the time. It's just a different way of looking at things um, and how people are taught, how they're conditioned. Um, a lot of times, people they'll do things that Western society thinks of as miracles, um, especially in children, um, and, and they can't figure out how that happened. Well, in a lot of those incidences. No one told the children they couldn't, <laughs> so they'll be doing some um, things. You'll have these, uh, people with extra teeth coming in, extra limbs, um, but nobody told them they couldn't. Um, so sometimes um, when limits are put on, not sometimes, but every time, um, and the possibilities are endless, that's why I named the show, because of some of the things that are are capable of what we are capable of producing in our own lives is just unreal um, or they are real actually they're possibilities um, so that is amazing um, are there any more questions well believe it or not we're at our last four minutes ah well this was an amazing hour and it was such an honor to have you on Dr. Drew oh yeah this is my pleasure too to uh, contribute to your program uh uh, you know, I don't know if you have, uh, Cindy, do you have other question, or you like I uh, add other comment, or? Well, um, no, I think that, that probably will cover it, but I will put the, the links to Quantum University um, up on the radio station's website, as well as our new blog for the show, um, which will be uh, the first of the week, um, and we will have these archives. Um, and ways that people can get a hold of Quantum University. And I encourage everybody that is interested in alternative medicine and healing. I really am thrilled with the curriculum and the professors. They are the tops in their field. And I do not say that lightly. They are very, very the best in the field. And you will get an education. And it is just it's amazing. Everybody is wonderful there. So with that, thank you, Dr. Druden. Once again, it was amazing. We'd love to have you back on at a future date, anytime. This has been the first show of Quantum Possibilities. Hopefully, we will have both of these wonderful people back on. I'm going to take you out with some music. And I'm grateful for all of the listeners and the enlivened chat that we have here live flagshipradio.com Thank you very much Thank you Tracy Thank you Dr. Gruden Thank you very much uh, to have me on your program
Thank you. Call the doctor, walk him up and say, Doctor, ain't there nothing I can take us to doctor? 